Since the first Friday of the football season, the Open Division Championship between undefeated Mission Hills and number two Helix has been the game that everyone has been talking about. All the hype coming to a head Saturday night at uh, 7.47 when the San Diego Section Open Division Championship kicks off between the Grizz and Scotties. It's a matchup of two Silver Pigskin finalists, the Grizzlies' Jack Tuttle and the Scotties' Isaac Taylor Stewart showing off his athleticism. But the first breakout play comes from the sophomore Elilian Noah, 40-yard run for him before punching it in for the first touchdown of the game. While Tuttle gets the ball and knows who goes to, that would be Chris Olave who holds on despite the shot from student athlete honoree Ray Sanchez there at the goal line. Next play, Grizz give it to Navy commit Sam Dixon and it's 10-6. Mission Hills leads it, but a Carson Baker has a little magic left before the half. Deep to Isaiah Wooden and the return specialist showing Look at this great catch right here. Over his head, 12 to 10 Helix at the break. Highlanders go for two, but Baker gets crushed. He limps off with a uh, halftime lead as the Grizzlies end up uh, breaking at the dynamic duo of Tuttle and Olave connect for a seven yard touchdown. So the Highlanders go back to Noah, crossing the goal line on uh, fourth down, 19 to 16 Helix after three. Mission Hills ties it on a field goal, but Baker with the perfect play action pass to Michael Shawcroft in the red zone as he goes for it on fourth down and uh, listen to the hard count by Baker as he draws the defense off sides and Noah makes him pay as the go-ahead touchdown right there as the Grizzlies have to respond but in the red zone it's the big hit takes out Tuttle for a play as the play they need because the backup gets sacked as Helix goes on to win the Open Division Championship, the final 26 to 19. Tonight's game, it was pretty, we did pretty good on both sides of the ball. You know, we kept them to 19 points. Mitchell is a very high scoring team, but you know, we did what we were coached to do on offense and defense side of the ball, and that's how we came out with the victory, man. We, we just play for one of each other, one for another. Um, we're a team, man, that comes first. You know, we have excellent body experience, and then we just love each other, and that's why we came out to win. I can finally say I have as much as my brother. <laughs> I have as much as my brother. My brother has one, I have one. Now we get to go celebrate. <laughs> Coach all got to us saying, no, we, we were his first half team, but we had to come out against Mission Hills because they're good. They're open division team. We had to face them and prepare right. Ramona just won one away from a perfect regular season, their first CAF football championship. Today, they take on the seven seed Steel Canyon, who are their first finals appearance in school history. The Silver Pigskin final strikes first. That'll be Tristan Stacy on the reverse, and the all purpose back goes around the end for the touchdown and, and lets them know about it that he's the first one in the end zone. Then the real works, fireworks go off. It's uh, Thomas Fishburne and to Jordan Anderson, and we're all tied up at seven. Ramona responding with the stretch play to Sean McDonald into the end zone. So Steele finds their running back, Kenneth Watson, on the screen pass. Watch him go 22 yards, but I'll tell you what, Ramona is not done. Here comes the future New Mexico State Aggie, a baseball player off the play action from Casey Buglin. He scores again. It's all tied up at 21 at the break. After the break, the Cougar defense ends up coming to life. Michael Oliver slams McDonald for the safety in the end zone. And then it's Fishburne taking it in from one yard out. The Cougars are up 33-21. As a last second try by Ramona. Look at this kind of interesting play here. As they would try to score after recovering the onside kick. But it's Steel Canyon winning their first championship in high school history and ending Ramona's perfect season. The final on this one, 33-29, they are D2 champs. People have been rooting against us all year. I think it's been nine times we've been picked to lose, and obviously our record is not that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's incredible feeling coming out here with my guys and just being able to overcome all the adversity that we've been through, you know. Uh, they shifted to their big package. We knew right away that we, we blitzed on that. We called it crazy. And, it's called crazy for a reason, and they wanted me back there instantly. So I saw opening, they weren't touching me, went back there, hit them as hard as I could, brought them back in the backfield. They made plays when they had to, and we just couldn't get in the rhythm that we've been in all year. You know, because you know, 29 points is good, but we just couldn't really, you know, find a way to, to stop them, you know, when we needed that stop. It was a tough loss, but I couldn't be more proud of these players and these coaches. We gave it our all, all season. Such a big turnaround from the last two seasons, and it was a tough loss. How about Division uh, Three action? Undefeated top seed Southwest El Centro taking on Santa Fe Christians. They 
Travel 200 miles. And that's Southwest uh, Tyler uh, Cyclone with a three-yard touchdown run as that puts Southwest up 14-7. Second quarter at Santa Fe on fourth and inches. Luke Sanders with a 40-yard run. Tying the game at 14. Uh, second quarter now with Santa Fe Christian with the interception by uh, Southwest Logan Chell leads to uh, Southwest Justin Cordova with a four-yard touchdown run to give Southwest El Central a 28-14 lead. Santa Fe gets back into this one. Luke Sanders with a five-yard touchdown run to make it 28-21. Santa Fe not done as they continue to go on offense. The uh, pitch right there in Southwest Carlos Ruiz catches it in midair, returns it 30 yards for a touchdown to make it 35 to 21. Santa Fe Christian's Michael Linguadoka with a 60-yard touchdown pass to Joe Burick to make it 35-28, but Santa Fe Christian with one minute left. Linguadoka's 50-yard pass to Josh Thompson. Well, a few plays later, as you see the grab there, Santa Fe Christian fourth and goal, intercepted by Derek Guzman to seal the win. Southwest El Centro wins their first San Diego Section CIF Championship in football history, the final 35 to 28. A lot of San Diego teams doubt us, and they don't think about the Valley when they think about CIF, you know. But we, we persevered, or we went, we just went in and executed, and uh, we showed all those people that, that we can do it, you know. Anybody can do it, you know. Imperial Valley is a there are great athletes down there, and uh, we proved it right now. I was saying, like, I think this guy's trying to pitch it to me because, like, it was too easy for me to grab it. Like, I didn't have to reach. It, like, came directly to me. And the guy was far away, so I, I thought I was going to have to reach for it or eat something, but it just came into my hands. Well, really, the last drive was indicative of our year. It was a lot of hard stuff, a lot of adversity, a lot of injuries, and I love coaching this group because they got so much grit and heart, and they're just never going to quit, and that, that makes it fun. Oh, by the way, the season is not officially over until the Silver Pigs can gala. Now, granted, all the champions are going to go off to uh, bowl games to play in those. Uh, the Silver Pigs can gala, though, is the real big end. It's Tuesday, December 12th, uh, 2017, on the USS Midway Museum. The live broadcast from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. You can watch it on KUSI TV and KUSI.com. And the PPR staff hard at work getting some 400 gala invitations in the mail on Monday. Most of if not all should have reached their port of call. My advice, don't wait to RSVP as seating is limited. We also want to update the Player of the Year fan vote. If you, the people, have responded in record numbers as we close in on 22,000 votes cast. <coughs> Excuse me, Tuttle and Taylor Stewart are separated by less than 300 votes. Keep in mind, it's the e-ballot that really decides the Player of the Year. 307 were mailed out. You can see a list of e-ballot recipients, though any reports of illegal gifting will be reported to the Silver Pigs and Gala Fraud Department. Remember, this all comes to a head Tuesday, December 12th, inside the hangar bay of the USS Midway Museum. Let's go to the happiest place. Oh, here, here's let's go the, to the action. Oh, we're going to throw it back to you, Rick. Let's turn for the action. All right, here we go. Here we go. Back to you guys at the set. <laughs> it's rolling right this very second. This Thanks is Brandon Stone. Brandon Stone's uh, technology. The scoreboard operator has a carpal tunnel right now. Uh, how about a warm pre-PR welcome to the player of the game? An eight touchdown, 390-yard performance. Mm -hmm. Jamal McClendon, congratulations. Yeah. 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 And a preview of D1. Yeah. I can't ex Buddy Holly's riding shotgun will be coming right back. There's Jamal McClendon, and let's just oh. watch him run for his eighth touchdown, tying the CIF record right there. That is, you just watch history right there, tying the CIF record, touchdown number eight, tying Dorian Richardson just said earlier this year. Rolls in, they go to Kaijan McCoy, uh, East Lake does, and I'll tell you what, he makes things happen. My Micah Piatella wins. Micah Piatella wins. Patella. You owe him another shirt. <laughs> Coach, mm -hmm. will you tell him what an integral part I am to that segment? You know, we couldn't do it without you pushing and touching <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, I'm the Vanna White of the segment. Without me, it doesn't work. Props to uh, Mr. Rick Willis for his uh, nice iPad cover there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> it matches his underwear. Leopard. Yes. Okay. We, we didn't Very even know spiffy. that. You know why I have that iPad cover? Because nobody will steal it. That's why. Let's go to the happiest place on earth, Disney World Point Loma Youth Football in the Division II Pee Wee Quarters against Ogden, Utah. What a day for Pointers quarterback Matt Pentland hitting uh, Jackson Emerson on the fade. And then here comes the jump ball to Kendall Johnson. And the whiteout rips it away from the Ogden defender as he would take it all the way for the score. The two connect again in the second half, this time to the left of your screen. It's a shutout. For Point Loma, they advance to the 
next round as we watch this highlights on that Tuesday. Well, CIF State Division Three Championship Volleyball, Point Loma Pointers. Take it on the four seed, a Lincoln Mustangs from San Francisco. That's Maggie Wolf with one of her 38 assists. And Sierra Kaffa with the kill. She has 16 of those. Later, it's Haley Brockett doing the honors. Her seven kills helping the pointers go up 2 nothing. while Charlie Ekstrom would lead the way in the third set. She collects a game-high 17 kills. The Lady Pointers are D3 state champions. Congratulations, ladies. The final 3-0. I'm ecstatic. I really wanted this more than anything for this season. We've come so far and this year was a double history making moment because we went as far as last year in a higher division and accomplished our goal of winning. So I think that it's just an incredible moment for us as a team. Oh my gosh, I love this team so much. Like all my best friends are on this team and I've made so many new friends this year and they're just so much fun to be around. It's really fun to end my senior year winning state. Fun to just wrap it all up with a win. Jose Martinez also hanging out, shooting this one as well up there in L.A., the Division IV Championship. RB taking down the top seed uh, presentation Panthers out of San Jose. That's third seed to the Lady Broncos. Jump up to a 2 nothing lead. Jordan Freeman and her seven kills, while Fairfield University commit Julie Callen connects with that game-high 27 kills, while fellow senior Jessica Malone leads the way with 36 assists. But unfortunately, it's just not enough as the Lady Panthers come back to win. Down 2 nothing. They win it 3-2. They're your Division Four champions. That will be presentation. I'm really, really proud of them. Like, it's been a pleasure like playing with them like throughout this whole like state like run that we had. And I think that we really fought hard tonight. Like, I love them to death, win or lose. Like, I think we really fought hard, especially in the fifth. Like, we were down and we like came back. I'm so happy to be able to play with them. They're like a second family to me. Each one of these girls I love so much. Like, I could not have made it through the season without all of their love and support. It's just been so great to have all of them. And North Park at St. Augustine, and the Saints opening up their new gym against the team they opened up their old gym almost 66 years to the day. The Grossmont Foothillers, first quarter, the Saints, Kimo Ferrari opening up the new gym with a three-pointer to give Saints an early lead. Fourth quarter now in the Saints, Chibuzo Agbo with the steal and slam dunk. That's a 20-point lead. Later on, fellow Saintsman Luke Hop gets the pass and has some hops as he slams it home as well. The Saints take care of Grossmont. The final 62 of 42 before the game. Saints AD Mike Stevenson talking about how it feels to have that brand new gym. This is a dream come true. Anybody that's ever been here to play basketball knows that this has been a long time coming and a really big deal for us. So um, I've been here a long time and this is, this, is, is, this is the greatest thing I've ever been around in this school. We have to have Brandon knock his head through the doors like we did the old one. Well, we're not done.